Good morning, everyone. Prayer is our defense. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Paul constantly asked other Christians to pray for him. We see the reference in Romans 15, 30, 2 Corinthians 1, 11. Paul knew that the success of his ministry in some measure depended on the prayers of God's people. There are three things that we will look today. First, pray for the word to penetrate. Paul asked the Thessalonian church and Christians to pray that the word would be free to do its work among others without any hindrance. That is to set him free when he was prisoned, to make him bold to share the word, to help him overcome trials and opposition. Paul in all his years have experienced the importance of prayer and power behind prayers. Paul knew that faithful prayers of the believers in the church, such as places where he ministered like Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians was important to him. God had promised that his word would be free and perform its work. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and prosper in the things which I send it, says Isaiah 55.11. But as with many of the promises of God, we are expected to take the promise in faith and in prayer, to ask God to perform the promises for His glory. Second, pray against the enemy schemes. Paul encourages and urges them to pray for themselves so that they will stand firm in their faith and will overcome the power of the enemy. Paul realized that they were unreasonable and wicked who picked, wanted to hinder the work of the gospel. Paul wanted God to either deliver him from such men or change them into reasonable and godly people. Prayer is a wonderful weapon against the work of the enemy. Prayer defends us from anything and everything that is not of God. Our prayer should be backed up with our faith in God because faithful prayer will release the power of God over our lives. It will break our every chain of sickness, addiction, weakness, trials and temptations. It will nullify the power of the enemy. It will strengthen our spiritual maturity. Third, pray for maturity. Paul was also confident regarding the Thessalonians themselves that they would follow through and be obedient to God's word. Paul inspires the work of the Lord into the hearts of the believers by saying that the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect them from the evil one. God doesn't just pour spiritual maturity and stability into us. He works in it and along with us and through us with our cooperation with his will. Paul wisely prayed for both love and patience, which otherwise is endurance, for the Thessalonian church and Christians. These are two qualities essential for the kind of spiritual stability and strength the Thessalonians needed. When God is faithful in all his work in our lives, we also need to be faithful in our prayers. James 5.16 says, The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Therefore, always pray in the Spirit. Ephesians 6.18 And never stop praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to pray that the world will penetrate into the areas it has not reached. We pray against the scheme of the enemies. We pray that you will Help us mature as believers through prayer, faith, love and endurance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.